Hey everyone, welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. For our Daily Word today, we're going into Psalm 46. I want to share the first part of verse 10, and then let's, let's talk just for a bit about uh, how God is God of the present and God of the future and what that means for uh, our lives. So if you would, hear the word of the Lord. Be still and know that I am God. What we see here as we're reading through Psalm 46 is that we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid, first of all, because God, our God, is God of the present. We read in verse 11, the Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. God is with us and we can find shelter in God, in God's presence. We can know His peace, His comfort, His strength, that relationship, that assurance that comes from the Holy Spirit dwelling in our hearts. We, we can know the, the very real, personal presence of God. He does comfort us by His Spirit as we shelter in Him. And in addition to that, as we read in verse 1, God is our refuge and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. God is, is with us, and in addition to the gift of His presence, He gives us the gift of His power. God is not reluctant to intervene, to help. We don't have to cajole. We don't have to argue. We don't have to bargain God into doing good for us. He is inclined to help us. As a matter of fact, the Scriptures tell us Jesus says to ask, to seek, to knock. He tells us in the Word to make our request be known. Uh, we're told in the Scriptures that the prayers of the righteous are powerful and effective. We're, we're told that whatever we ask in Jesus' name and, and in the will of God will be done for us. We're told that even the Holy Spirit helps us as we pray. And so we we don't have to be afraid because we know God is the God of the present, right? He, he is, the, is God of the, of, pre, of the present. And then secondly, we don't have to be afraid because God is God of the future. Verses 4 and 5, A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. And this scripture we, we learn as we read forward in the scriptures is pointing toward the heavenly city, pointing toward heaven, pointing toward the river of the water of life. And, and so I share with you from Revelation 22, verses 1 through 5, then, then the angel showed me a river with the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the center of the main street. On each side of the river grew a tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, with a fresh crop each month. The leaves were used for medicine to heal the nations. And so this is pointing forward to the return of Jesus Christ. We know where history is going. We know that the culmination of history will be the return of Jesus Christ. He will bring the kingdom in its fullness. He will renew all things. Heaven and earth will be one, and we will dwell with God. He will be our God, and we will be His people. We will be in His manifest presence. We will worship and praise Him. This river of the water of life will run right through the city uh, of, of God. And so it's pointing us forward to the coming of Jesus, toward uh, the, the culmination of the kingdom of God. And then in verse 9 we read of Psalm 46, He causes wars to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shield with fire. God sovereign over, he is, is sovereign over all. He is, um, as much as we manage to mess things up, and we do, and we do. And yet God is sovereign over all of history. He is bringing history to this good end with the return of Jesus Christ. We, we can trust what God is doing with the future of, of all of creation, but also we can trust God with our future. 
That, that is our personal future, our personal eternity. He's promised us that if we believe in Jesus, live in Him, put our trust in Him, receive Him as Lord and Savior, that we are given eternal life. It begins now. We begin living into the kingdom of God. We begin living with the presence of God in us, and that is brought to its fullness as Jesus welcomes us to our, our heavenly home, that place prepared for us. And so we need not fear, even, even should the very earth that we are on should come apart. Verse 2, so we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. You see, we, we don't have to be afraid, even if the very ground under our feet gives way, the earth comes apart. Even still, we are held in the hands of the God who is God of the present and God of the future. Our lives are built on that solid rock who is Jesus Christ. And thanks be to God for that in, in His name. Amen. Amen. And friends, until we have a chance to speak again, I pray that God would bless you and that He would keep you.